Let me throw some dirty laundry on the line right now. This will be, in some ways, a negative review on the Inland Manufacturing new production M1 carbine. If you're considering buying this gun, watch the whole video. I have fresh, non-TPA data to share with you guys. I am not stoked about the gun. Stupidly, I went out and spent money on it, and now with this review, we will not be able to sell it, and we will basically give it away. <sighs> it's much easier just loaning guns from you guys. Yeah, I like doing that best of all. So yeah, we're going to talk about some negative things, some seriously negative things about the Inland, inland Manufacturing M1 carbine. Uh, there are some good things too. I'll cover all of that. <laughs> so there you go. Housekeeping though, uh, the website at the top is our web store. Patches in stock and Tactical Doodle. By your request, just order t-shirts. So they are pretty awesome. I guess they're selling pretty good. But they're in stock now. They often sell out and they're gone. Uh, thanks for supporting us and keeping us totally independent, bringing you tabletop reviews like this. That sometimes irritate people because when you talk very honestly about whatever, a knife, a gun, a backpack, whatever, uh, and it's negative, people don't like it. I mean, some viewers won't like it, manufacturers won't like it, and that's just the nature of being a human being. You know, the truth is sometimes difficult. Uh, by the way, this is just a single data point. It's a single gun, so I'm not going to say... You know, I'll actually I'll say this. I'll leave it up to the viewer to project my data onto whatever gun you buy. You could pick one up and it's excellent. But seeing what I've seen from this one, uh, I just look at my likability scale. It's it's uh, my unvarnished take on the gun. So there you go. There's your super super quick summary, and we'll go into some of the details. This is not a history les lesson on the M1 carbine at all. Go watch my original review. I covered a lot of the history, developmental stuff, uh, points of manufacture, differences of manufacture, the different versions, M1, A1, A2, A3, M2, M3, blah, blah, blah. No, this will be focused with laser beam accuracy on the inland manufacturing, which is not related to the original one of World War II, M1 carbine. Okay, so yeah, I know, bummer. Let me give you a, a little bit of a story time. You ready? To get us in a happier mood. Oh, I like happy moods. So here's a perfect day for me growing up in Virginia. I was about 10 years old. I forget if I've told you this story before. And by the way, during the video, I may roll in uh, our original shooting footage of the M M1 carbine, our World War II one, which I'll show you here in a second. And also the inland manufacturing, which by the way, you may see jamming. But here's a perfect day. It's about 1975, I think. We were in... I believe the incorporated part of Hampton Roads, Virginia, and my buddy, who was older than me, would come over, and he he would say, "Hey, you want to go shooting bullfrogs in the gravel pit?" Excellent. I'm like, "Absolutely!" I would take my Ruger 10 22, and before I had that one, I had like a single shot Ithaca lever action 22, and he had, he had multiple guns. One was a riot shotgun. He had a Model 59 Smith & Wesson. And he also had a universal, I believe, brand M1 carbine. And that was my favorite gun to shoot. And the place was overrun with frogs. So it was big gravel pit, high walls, you know, huge gra gravel pit as I remember. And bullfrogs everywhere. So we'd snipe them. <laughs> yeah, we'd go back and cook them. Uh, I'm not a big fan of frog legs. Maybe you are. But we ate them. Tug on it, make sure it's blast in. them out of the water. Great fun. That's Ruger 1022, and then his uh, M1 carbine. I go. love the power, the low recoil, and the noise of that gun. And again, I was only 10, but it seemed like a, I don't know, a machine gun to me at the time, and how fast you could shoot it. Ammo was expensive to us back then. Neither one of us had a lot of money, but man, it just kind of locked into my brain what a cool gun it was. That Those afternoons spent with Creed shooting his M1. Loved it. Uh, by the way, Creed Walton, if you're out there, get in touch with us. Where are you? Love to know. Love to know. He went in the Army later in life, and I don't know what happened thereafter. So years later, especially with the Nut and Fancy Project, we get, went out and secured this. And this is an, a genuine uh, World War II inland manufacturing, the original inland. I'm just going to say IM because uh, that's just – actually, it's inland division back then. Now it's IM. So it was an ID, <laughs> inland division. Produced uh, June 1943, as best we can tell, what a great gun this is. So that enthusiasm I had as a young kid for this gun, oh my gosh, just 
oozing. And as we shot this back in 2000, probably circa 12 to 14, I posted the review of this gun with all the history and other stuff in it. And I think March of 14, it played out exactly the way I expected it would. Even though the bore on this particular gun, as I said in the review, is not great. I mean, you look down it and it looks horrible, but it shoots reliably and it shoots accurately. We have no plans to ever sell this gun. It has the old lever type safety on it. Other, it has a barrel band on it. You know, what's original, what's not, who knows? I just love it. Great stock. Okay, so with drills kicking off like Soldier Boy and stuff, I thought, well, maybe it'd be fun to shoot an M1 carbine. Maybe we could surprise someone as they come out for Soldier Boy and they think they're going to shoot their tricked out AR. And lo and behold, we go, hey, and I'm kind of give you kind of an insight to what I may do. So if you get tapped, be prepared that you're going to shoot a gun that you didn't see coming at all and you're not shooting your your prepped gun so to me that was funny but i didn't want to shoot this you know and go put wear and tear in a world war ii collectible i mean you have to take care of it all as i am is a you know the curator of this piece until it passes to the next generation my kids and then to their kids and who knows where it will end up and whoever took care of it prior to me did a great job so i went out looking and i was like well how about i am inland manufacturing they're making a new production M1 carbine. Um, what I read is it had walnut stocks. The, actually, it, before I bought it, I didn't really look too heavily into research. I will admit, because I like to be fresh. And pulled the trigger on it, no pun intended, and bought it, and here it is. So here's the IM version of that gun. Now, I got a big gash on my finger. Sorry, you're just gonna have to look at it. Uh, yeah, hit my finger with a hammer putting a boat together, blah, blah, blah. They have several versions of this gun, by the way. Uh, this is, I believe, the 1945 with no bayonet lug of the IM. They have a 1944 with a bayonet lug. They have an M1A1 paratrooper. They have a jungle. They also have a scout that has a half by 28 threaded barrel. Uh, kind of a modernized, you know, take on the M1 carbine. Cool, you know, maybe that's what some guys want. I like going traditional myself. Let me start here, uh, and this is really important for all you manufacturers that decide to go in and make a period, uh, let me say, it reincarnate a period gun. So IM said, we're going to do an M1 carbine. Um, it's going to be so exact, we're actually going to stamp on the barrel so people don't get confused that it's not original. That's what the marketing hype was on this gun. I did read some of that, and I was like, wow, it must be really tight. In other words, I was thinking it would look like this. Does this gun look like this gun? Now granted, this is a World War II piece. It's seen a lot of years, but look at the wood, look at the bluing and the parkerization. Does it even come close? To me, it doesn't. And the first thing that stands out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go feature by feature on this. And maybe I'll jump back to philosophy views, but I gotta get to this, is the wood. Now, from everything, maybe I'm wrong, but from everything I read, this is supposed to be a walnut stock, right? Mm, I don't think this is walnut. In fact, I know it's not walnut. And as soon as we got it, uh, and I hadn't seen it, I ordered it through a broker site, and it came to us, I was extremely disappointed with the wood. To the point, and I'm being totally serious with you guys, to the point that I said, well... I wonder if someone swapped the wood out with an aftermarket stock, and this is not an original inland manufacturing stock. That's what I thought. Because I think this wood right here, and I won't say definitively, but I think it's it's rubber wood. Do you guys ever hear that? Rubber wood? It's a hard wood. I think it's tropical. It's a really hard wood. It's very serviceable, but it's very inexpensive. And to prove the point, here is a TV tray we have made of rubber wood. Look at the grain. See the striations here? So inexpensive TV tray. It's used in this because, well, it's inexpensive. It is very serviceable, but it sure as the heck ain't walnut. Look at the grain on this. Look familiar? Now maybe it's, an, and I'm not the end-all wood expert, but maybe there's a, a variation of walnut that I just don't know. Maybe it is. I, it just doesn't look. This is walnut. Look. Look at the grain. See, that is walnut. And I've been around a lot, 
a lot of you know wood stocked rifles in my lifetime I can pick out walnut I think this is not walnut I think it's rubber wood now they had a chance to look at it so I know for a fact this is not a an aftermarket stock this is what I am put on it because the gun did go back to them I was wondering if other people were complaining about this if anyone had an issue with it I just got done reading through five online articles about reviewing this gun not one of them mentioned it they all raved about the walnut how great the wood was this is low wood on this IM I was like wow okay if you look at some of their photos online it looks like this it looks like walnut Let's get back to my point. Is the presentation for a gun this storied, this famous, that fought in so many wars that people want to possess what I always call that second kind of cool, it needs to present like this, says me. And I would say I'm right because their photos show a gun that looks like this, not that. Had I seen a photo of this accurately in the photos that I did see online, it was really hard to tell what the wood looked exactly like. I was like, well, maybe it's off. Uh, it's disappointing. So I'm going to give presentation not good. By the way, you'll notice the sight knob is gone. Right? We'll talk about that. Yeah. So wood, I don't know. I don't know. Let's start up here at the muzzle. Uh, I'm seeing some wear here. I have no idea why. I, have, I don't know where that came from. I didn't put it in a rifle rack. It's just there in the park. I don't know. I have no issues with the parkerization here. Uh, well, let me say this. Mostly, I don't have that many issues. I got glue on my hands, too. It's doing projects. Sorry. Um, it's okay. I say okay because what I'd really like to see is green parkerization. Going back to presentation. Hey, that's not period correct. Yeah, I hear you. I, you can make a point with that. But I don't think this is, a, you know, a... Uh, and I'm not the M1 carbine expert, but is this, you know, are we mimicking exactly a certain model of M1 carbine. Like I said, and I'd be may maybe mixing this up, I think this is a 1945 version, that's what they call it. And I think it has a Type 2 barrel band right here. I get confused with all that stuff. Um, I don't know. But I, I can tell you this, guys, gun guys love green parkerization. There's just something about it. Hey, it's not correct though, nothing. All right, I still love it. I would love it to be in Green Park, or at least offer a version of it. Say, we know this is not exactly authentic, but we're going to give you an option for Green Parkerization. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's really, it's basically what a lot of Grands wore. If you go watch my Grand video, we show one with Green Parkerization. It's just cool. Uh, barrel band, and this, uh, I don't know, it's okay. It's okay. You know, I, I would almost like to see something mimicking this. Just me. Yeah, low wood. Uh, I didn't like the high, and this might be a criticism on the M1 carbine as a whole. And I'm going to remind myself, I'm looking through the sights on the World War II version. And there is no occlusion at all on this gun. But when I look with the IMs, and I can't show this on camera right here. The wood halfway blocks the front sight. It comes up so high. That's irritating, man. You can't even see half your front blade. You know, and then if someone rolls in, well, you know, you could mill that out. Come on, man. It's an M1 carbine. You don't want to be digging into it. It's a brand new gun. It should be squared away. Top rod is fine. It's a round bolt, not a flat bolt version. Uh, and the coating actually is decent on here. I don't, there's, I'm, I'm kind of ranting a little bit about the Green Park, but let's just by way of reference look at this. This one here. And granted, this has more than a little bit of wear on it, but character, man. If there's a way you can mimic that character, that pre and get that presentation all the better. I did mention uh, the push button safety. I had a rotational lever on the World War II one. I actually like the push button as far as functionality. There's your magazine release, no problems there. You got a MIMD, that is uh, investment cast, actually not MIMD, but investment cast uh, trigger guard there versus the machined one. That's just how it has to be in this day and age. It's just too expensive to do otherwise. Uh, no problem there. Now the trigger, some of those reviews I read, guys are like, oh, it's got a nice trigger on it. Uh, I'm not going to pull it on the scale just for time, but it actually doesn't have that great of a trigger as far as pull weight. It's about eight and a half pounds. This World War II M1 carbine, this ID Inland Division, 1943, granted, been shot a lot probably, uh, six and a half pounds. So a really nice trigger. 
Can you machine it? Uh, not machine it, but gunsmith it. Yeah, totally. A magazine retention on the IM is excellent. No problems there. And that will take us to kind of the heart of the matter, shooting the gun. Now, it doesn't, I don't think, officially have a last shot hold open, uh, as you will see in the shooting footage. This is a 15-round mag. That's what it comes with. Um, shooting was immediately disappointing with the IM M1 carbine to a level that, it, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. And I want to show you the footage because, uh, the video, because in case you think I'm making it up, and I have no agendas at all, ever. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, it would not get through the testing protocol. You might see me getting pissed in the video. I was. I was like, why? I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, how is a gun like this shipped out of the factory that has so many problems? And this one on the top, the 1943, it shucks everything. We had no reliability problems at all. All different magazine. Much better than this. That's the first problem I saw. So it just would jam, jam, jam. Wouldn't extract around. And then I had a massive amount of brass shavings come into play here too which I did not like. I mean, I think I show video of that. So it, it was disappointing, dude, disappointing. And I was like, well, and you might say, well, what rounds did you shoot? Well, my first answer is, sh should it matter with a new production gun? I don't like it when guys make excuses with a new production gun and go, well, you know, it takes a specific ammo. It takes a specific magazine. You should know that. I say bullshit. I say it should be reliable with any oh, modern production. Dude ammo we used Aguila and two other brands which i forget i think one was one was mag tech here's some right here so this stuff so what to do now i'm in the middle of review i can't even finish my testing i did take it out on another outing and it was doing the same thing with a different ammunition type i was like well and i rarely do this i was like well i'm just i'll send it back i spent the time and money sending it back so here's the work order on it. So I sent it in in March. And I, I will say this, Inland Island, uh, Inland Manufacturing had great customer service. They were super friendly. They turned the gun around quickly. I think the owner himself tuned the gun. But this is what he said. He said, adjusted feed ramp, chamber ramp, um, adjusted customer's mag, right lip. Oh, arms core is what. Then test fired with Aguila and arms core. Okay. Now here's I really have a problem with the magazine bending. I have a huge problem with it because what you're saying is that the gun is so finicky that every magazine has to be tuned to that individual gun. And for a modern production gun of this cost, which is around 800 bucks, 900 bucks, come on. Now, look how many mags I got. So now I've got to fit, well, is this one tuned? And now if I put it back into this gun, are we gonna have you know, reliability issues with that magazine and this gun because we bent the feed lips on that? I mean, you lose your interchangeability of the magazines right out the gate. I have a huge issue with that. Anytime someone says you gotta tune the magazine for the gun to work right, it is a fail. Uh, even if it's an M1 carbine, it's a fail. We're talking about reliability, obviously, track record. So I get it back, and again, they were super awesome in, in the quickness of the turnaround. Doodle and I go to the indoor range, and we're like, let's see how this gun's doing, the IM. And so I'll show you the footage. I will say this, it was about 85% reliable. It was definitely better, but I don't know if I would you know, recommend it to my viewers, especially if you want it for a serious purpose, like a defensive carbine, which I've recommended against a PCC, speaking of philosophy of use. I don't know. So it still choked. I mean, it wasn't often, and I did go through a couple mags and it was fine. And the next thing you know, it just failed, failure to chamber. Now, when I post a video like this, it's interesting because guys will come in and they'll say, well, you need to do this, you need to do that to get the gun reliable. The point you need to understand, commenter, is this is a new gun. You shouldn't have to do anything. So I completely reject that line of thought. A gun out of box, especially coming back from the manufacturer, should be 100% reliable. And it should have a note. Sorry, this is why this particular serial number was not functioning. Again, I go back to those other reviewers. The ones I read, and they're like, yeah. You know, we had, I think one said, yeah, we had one, like, initial you know, failure to feed, and then it ran 100%. It was flawless. Several said flawless. I'm like, dude, I just, 
maybe I don't know. I and I can't really say say that uh, it was just a lemon because this gun went back to the factory. Somewhere along the way, the rear sight adjustment knob flew off. So pulling it out for review, I don't know where it's at. And I noted for this gun to be zeroed, I had to like drift it. I think it's drifted too far. It's kind of like this, but more to the left. And then not fell off. How did that come off? Why should it come off? Uh, this one's been in service since World War II. It's never come off. Uh, it's just cheesy, if you ask me. It's cheesy. That's unacceptable. Hey, but you screwed it too far. It doesn't matter. A gun needs to be idiot-proof. Everybody can be an idiot. You're under. Look at the M1 Garand, dude. You want an idiot-proof semi-automatic combat rifle? The M1 Garand. It's pretty idiot-proof. They gave it to all types of troops, all types of dudes from different backgrounds, various levels of mechanical ability, or none at all. That gun ran fine. So did a properly built M1 carbine, for the most part. There were some complaints in the Korean conflict, but mostly that's a really good track record. I don't know, man. I don't know. How about accuracy? Well, again, I was pretty upset when this is all happening. I was like, God, do I even go through the freaking accuracy protocol? I tried. Here's Arms Corps, and I think I said MagTech. I guess Arms Corps and MagTech. I honestly forget. I told you I was dreading this review. The accuracy was pretty decent, though. This is 50 yards. Uh, reliability is awful. Yep. I would think uh, it's a little less accurate than this one, but it's decent. I would expect it 100 yards with iron sights like this, minute of pie plate. Dang, I, and guys, like one review I read, it says, oh yeah, you can get two uh, inches out of the IM gun. I was like, yeah, I'd like to see it. 100 yards, I'd love to see it. And you have to come shoot with me. So no, no trickery, games, special camera work. You come shoot with me and you show me how you get two inches out of this gun. Ain't gonna happen, says me. Here's a 25 yard standing. This is in March. Still jamming. This is after it came back to us. So we're shooting April, tactical duel and myself. And this is just 12 yards, so decent. Um, other things about the gun, we kind of got sidetracked there. Uh, the stock, pretty normal. I have like a Repro Mag Carrier. I think TD threw this on there, a couple 15s in it. A I think it comes with a sling. I honestly forget. There's a quick look at the butt pad right here, or the butt plate, sorry. Quick look at this side of the inland manufacturing M1 carbine. Uh, here we go again. I, I gotta say it, this wood is just plain ugly. Ugly. You know what it reminds me of? Is my dad, we built a deck one year and he's gonna try this new water-based redwood stain. He's like, let's try this. This was a long time ago, like in the 80s. So we bought this water-based redwood stain, and it was more of like a paint. It really didn't tint the wood. It kind of painted the wood. That's what this looks like. It looks like there's kind of a tint process going on here to color the wood. Remember that rubber wood I showed you is very light color, so it looks like it's actually kind of painted. That's how it looks to me. And you see some gathering of it here. So I, I won't say definitively, like I said, but yeah, that's what it looks like. It is very disappointing the wood on this it's it is so bad that if i were to keep this this gun uh and if it was 100 percent reliable due to be a different tabletop review totally but if i was to keep this gun i would throw this stock in the garbage and i would buy an aftermarket stock properly done a genuine walnut stock like this one done doesn't have to be used but something new and then i'll finish it myself and i will make it look like this without the wear I'm sorry, dude. That's just the way it is. Um, let's, well, uh, you know, the sight actually before it fell apart was standard M1 carbine, graduated to 300 yards or so. I actually like the M1 carbine sight. I think it's cool. Works great. Here's one that's not falling apart. You know, it's been that way <laughs> since 1943. If you're wondering, the quality levels between this gun and that one are night and day. I mean, milled, investment cast. Everything just reeks of quality on this older one. So good luck finding an original M1 carbine. What if it worked? What if it was totally reliable, had a great trigger on it, and you know, it was built more robustly and had beautiful wood on it? Well, I would say it'd be totally worth the money. There is a new modern production one out, Auto Ordnance is doing it. 
I haven't had an opportunity to shoot that one. Maybe it's better. I have looked at them a little bit closer. Um, and they seem pretty good. But man, have I been wrong in the past. I thought this one would be pretty good. Philosophy of use, like we said, a uh, home defense gun. I wouldn't, you know, give you an okay on this one. I'm not this one. I would. The idea, I guess, is you're in the realm of a pistol caliber carbine, PCC, and I've said that this, in a lot of respects, beats a PCC, especially a nine millimeter, because you're shooting around 1,900, 2,000 feet per second, 110 grain bullet. It it hits like a 357 out of a rifle. You can change your loads if your gun's reliable with them. Take the it's, a, it's an option. You know, myself, I'd go with an AR. That's what I would do. If penetration's a, a, you know, an issue, then you shotgun. Bird shot, dude. It'll be within room distance anyhow. Put some number four double lots in there to alternate. Uh, other philosophies of use. Well, I bought it as a drill rifle in TMP. Who knows what's going to happen with it. I actually am going to try to sell it. If you guys want to buy it, Contact us through the P.O. box. Man, we lose a lot of money. I buy them just like you do. Lose so much freaking money. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, accessories are what I talked about before. There is a sight modification. I think KFS Industries has one. You might say, well, put a tune... And I, I was going to say this earlier. Put a tune-up kit in it. Maybe it gets reliable then. It might be a spring issue. Nothing fancy. You know, Wolf's is 12 bucks. I hear you, but I'll, I'll stick what I said. You shouldn't have to modify a new gun for reliability. If you're doing it for a second cool, that's different. Get a paratrooper case, a different type of flash hider, like the cone, conical one, that threaded barrel version, throw it on there, stripper clips, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> I am. Uh, Likeability scale's at the bottom, man. What can I say? Uh, Inland manufacturing M1 carbine. Uh, what would I change to make it better? I think I've said already, but in case you didn't get it, let me summarize it. Put genuine walnut on there. Make it look like this World War II one. Make it beautiful. Study the World War II guns. If you can mimic how they look, all the better. Guys will dig it. Presentation is huge. This, for instance, looks entirely, I don't know, too modern to me. I wouldn't mind it beat up a little bit have it weathered and if you want to mark it so people know it's not authentic great mark it in places that aren't readily seen no one's going to have an issue with that that's what i'd like to see you know, that windage knob falling off on the rear sight unacceptable the reliability issue unacceptable make them fix those and you'll have a winner best of luck it is american made and i do wish them luck but i cannot lie nothing fancy Well, that was a rough, rough start for the Inland M1 Carbine. Very rough start. Let's see how it does now. This is not going well, this M1 Carbine. I wish I'd bought more mags. Jeez. Piece of shit. So now there's about only 10 rounds in here. They don't work with a standard 30, I'm not interested. Just a lot of drag on that bolt. A lot of drag. In a 30 round magazine. So there's 20 rounds in one.
yet another malfunction. Gosh dang, this is horrible. Uh, test discontinued. I'm discontinuing the test. I hate this gun enough. I'm not going to waste more time on it. Uh, it's got quality issues. Stock is ugly. Machining marks. It appears to be inaccurate and it definitely is not reliable. Not with this magazine. I'll show you what I'm talking about with the accuracy. Those were all good trigger presses too. At 50 yards. This is at 50 yards. Dang, son. This is disappointing. Well, it leaves the market open for someone who knows how to do an M1 carbine correctly. From what I'm seeing, this ain't it. This is shit. These are all good trigger presses right here, guys. The other group is on the masking tape. Brand new, too. That's brand new. Not the shooter, it's the gun. Not good.